Here is a bold claim. Halo Infinite's story is the best Halo story ever made. <gasps> it's not that bold of a claim now. Calm down. I grew up on Halo. I love me some good old Halo, but there was always something missing for me in the stories and tell Halo Infinite. I haven't read any of the books, so potentially there's some straight up Charles Dickens level classics, though I doubt that. But I'm not counting them anyway. I don't read game books, I play game games. Though I would play a books game, or just read a books book. So what's the deal? Why is Halo Infinite story so good? Why might it not be good? Why is it clearly the best? Why is anyone who thinks it's not the best a nostalgia drunkard living in a past tense fantasy world? Halo Infinite, if you think about it, is kind of like a soft reboot of the franchise, but in a Force Awakens kind of way. Now, wait a second before you pull out the pitchforks. Halo Infinite is good. Force Awakens is stupid. Just let me finish the comparison. <laughs> what does the first Star Wars movie have? Parentless child on desert planet seeks greater destiny, finds droid with secret plans, flies away on Millennium Falcon, gets entangled with the evil faction that wants to subjugate galaxy. Evil faction blows up planets with weapon. So parentless child joins rebels to blow it up. Mentor gets killed by lightsaber. Planet destroying weapon is destroyed. It's like that. Master Chief gets Cortana unit. Runs around on adventure, entirely contained to one specific halo. Finds out about new ancient evil. Seeks to quell it. Snarky marines follow the chief as he fights elites. Grunts, jackals, hunters. And Brutes didn't come until Halo 2. Friendly Orb turns out to be an angry boy. Cortana hack stuff as you traverse Forerunner structures. And Spoopy Boys try to spoop you. Marines with questionable AI react to Pelicans dropping off Warthogs. Drive said Warthogs as well as Banshees and Ghosts around a vaguely alpine setting that is beautiful to look at. Escape an exploding ship in a Warthog racing sequence. That didn't happen in Infinite? Maybe I need to rethink this analogy. No, 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 no. It was in the beginning of the game, and there wasn't a Warthog. Still counts. This is not a strike against Halo Infinite, mind you. I'm just saying that J.J. Abrams and Paul Crocker, who wrote Halo Infinite, went to the same school of soft rebooting. But Paul got an A, and J.J. got a C-. minus. Basic story of Halo Infinite is as such. Ship gets in orbit around this halo. Cortana's supposed to be here, and she's a big poopy face who wants to control the galaxy. But these banished buttheads are here too. The UNSC doesn't want some buttheads blowing up the galaxy, so they fight for the halo. Chief gets the business from this guy, Atriox, and spends the next six months taking a space siesta while the UNSC fights for control of the halo. Because Chief has plot armor, without him, the UNSC gets their butts handed to them by the banished buttheads. <laughs> Everything from this second on is spoilers about this story. Our man, Fernando, you don't learn his name until the literal last cutscene, was losing his mind adrift in this pelican for those six months until he finds the chief and powers his suit back up. Master Chief oh, does Master Chief things. He finds coordinates for a weapon on the Halo. Turns out the weapon was a Cortana unit, tasked with deleting the other space dictator Cortana. And it was apparently successful. Now it's an open world game. People keep saying like Breath of the Wild, but that's a stupid comparison. It's like a Far Cry game. Yes, you spend most of your gameplay time battling buttheads who are trying to control a galaxy destroying weapon. But the focus on the story is on the core relationship between our main two protagonists, Green Coon and Purple Chan, and their little blue baby. Halo 5 did a big whoopsie that made people grumpos, which was take beloved character that's integral to the series and make them lose their minds as an evil dictator. Found you. Hide and seek's over, Infinity.
that's a big no-no for the fan base. That's like if Jake the dog became an irredeemable dictator that starts murdering people. We could rule them like gods. Angry gods. <laughs> a big no-no for the fan base. It's like if you take this beloved and hopeful character who even on his father's deathbed feels like he's redeemable despite having been truly evil. I'll not leave you here. I've got to save you. So filled with hope and brightness. I know there is good in you. The Emperor hasn't driven it from you fully. Then you made him a grouchy trash heap who thinks children aren't even redeemable even before they've committed any kind of wrong actions. A big no-no for the fan base. Wait, that one actually happened. Brian Reed, who wrote Halo 5, and Ryan Johnson went to the same school of betraying fans through character corruption. And they both got a double S ranking. Maybe even a triple S. Halo 5 shredded Cortana's character up, then cobbled together an amalgamation of Cortana that only had one single similar part, and that was her fondness of Master Chief. But did she die in Halo 4? Why was she even in Halo 5? Turns out one of the core themes of the Halo franchise narrative is what I call the Cortana is dead, oops just kidding principle. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Happens in Halo 3 and Halo 5, and again in this one, Halo Infinite. But this time around, they do a soft reboot of the character, which is especially apt because, you know, she's a computer. I'm a computer. <laughs> they simultaneously violated and held staunchly to this principle in Infinite. It got contextualized into being the Cortana's dead, oops, new Cortana conundrum which I'm actually a huge fan of. After Halo 5, there weren't a lot of places to go in the narrative. I think for Halo to work, you need Cortana. Chief is kind of a big, mostly silent guy who does his talking with his fists. He doesn't talk much. He's more of what you might call a man of action. This makes the moments where he gives some short snippets rather endearing. More banished. How come they're here? To protect the Harbinger. Clearly. Will it work? What do you think? If I told you what I... Oh, I get it! Sarcasm! You're funny, too! Cortana is a way to keep the gameplay chief. Uh, keep chief as the gameplay. Y you know, because your character is, is, is Master Chief. But you still need a bit of exposition to know what the heck is even going on in the story, or what the context of your mission is. And most of that narrative exposition gets delivered by Cortana having a conversation with Chief. This works really well. Think we're giving up? UNSC distress pulse. No response on comms. We should check it out. Look at this place. All the spires interconnected. Just waiting to become something more. So much potential. In the Doom reboot, oh, so good! Doom 2016, so good. In the Doom reboot, they even gave Doom Guy a Cortana in the form of Vega. Hello, I am Vega, the sentient intelligence assigned to Mars. Vega tells you what you're doing, and you as Doom Guy do the guns and explosions part. I will not survive the procedure and am unable to self-terminate, so I will walk you through the process. Cortana interacts with the ancient Forerunner technologies and enemy security systems, and you as Master Chief do the guns and explosions part. So in my opinion, Cortana actually being dead is a huge problem. That's why they kept using the Cortana is dead, oops, just kidding principle. But because she was the main antagonist in the previous game, who is now irredeemable because of her atrocities committed, they needed a way to get her back as well as not retcon her horrors. The reactions numerous, yet mostly predictable. Look upon Doisek one last time, and remember, you chose this path. their 
home? Escherums? Atrioxes? An entire planet? How could she do that? Thus, the Cortana is dead oops new Cortana principle. In Halo 5, a lot of that exposition was split up between the four co-op characters. Door sealed tight. Forerunner security station. Must be in lockdown. Any way to lift it? The Artemis can analyze Forerunner systems. Which dilutes the narrative. Now you're trying to juggle four characters' screen time. Then they split the game into two playable squads, so now you're diluting between eight characters. Plus, there was a commander guy and an AI Cortana replacement. What is... Who is this guy? Halo Infinite pulls it back to just Chief, New Cortana, and Fernando as the core. So a lot of the game is you and New Cortana going through this. You're not my dead AI girlfriend, but you sure act like her. Chief is all, do I block her? Do I not block her? But in this scenario, it's do I delete her? Because another incarnation of her code was a galaxy-destroying dictator under the guise of robot peace through violence and violation of rights trope. Population? A Comia station currently holds 76 Spartan fours. They have orders to stand against you. Short-sighted fools. You have served me well, Leonidas. Your sacrifice is appreciated. Understood. Good luck, Cortana. No. She took out the training facility? Those Spartans... All gone. All of them? Why would she... Let's move. Recontextualizing Cortana as both villain and hero again is great. Good Cortana is a different color, wearing the uniform, more innocent. <laughs> that was fun. Wanna do it again? Didn't go through the whole Halo 2 and Halo 3 madness thing, and Halo 4. So you kinda get that discovery of the Cortana Chief team up like in Halo 1. Evil Cortana is a dark color, less spunky vocal affect, blows up planets. You get to keep the consequences of what I think was a gross narrative misstep without having to retcon or reset anything. But you get back what is foundational and critical to the series, the Chief Cortana team-up. Additionally, they pull the narrative way, way back. You're not jumping around the galaxy introducing all these characters every two seconds. It's just Chief, Cortana, and Fernando, and the story benefits greatly. I felt more connected to this character of Master Chief in this Halo than in any other Halo. Love that it's dialed back to just one Halo location and just these characters. In addition, I think the open world setting does the game some favors in the dialed back narrative department. It makes it easier to contextualize these lower key conversations. Put that conversation in the scheduled downtime of traveling to the next objective and it feels 100% natural. Probably the most emotional moment in the whole game for me was one of these side conversations right after I completed a mission. I don't think I've cared about or been more invested in this character of Master Chief than in this moment right here. You got family, Chief? Anyone special out there? No. Then, why do you do this? Again and again. It's all I know. What about you? Do you have anyone out there? No. Not anymore. I'm sorry. It's... It's just been... So long since... Anyone's even asked me something like that. I... It's gonna be okay. We're with the Master Chief. He'll make it okay, won't you? Chief doesn't reply with witty bravado. He doesn't spout some cliche affirmation. He just stays silent, and you keep pushing towards the next objective. I like the writing in this game. The grunts are fun. It's the best humans! 
go back in time and tell your parents to try harder. The Marines are fun. Oh, that's a hell of a weapon. How we get even? Well, that's not exactly a fair trade, is it? That was his. I'm gonna be sick! Hello, I ain't showered for four months. You know what? I smell great. Marines are back to being those Halo 1 snark machines. These Marines are more fun than they've ever been. These grunts are more fun than they've ever been. I bet riding on this game was a blast. Or maybe not. Either way, I'm a huge fan of the writing, the drama, the comedy, it all hits. I'm especially thrilled with the styling of these cutscenes. Look at this shot construction. Not to mention what a great transition! Chief is framed up front with the tower looming in the back. Great shot construction. Pen up so you can see the tower. Chief being up front gives you a great sense of scale for this massive structure. And, th and then you just zoom back in. Spin around, show his spicy, spicy visor. Cortada gives you some it's okay. background information about the stuff that's going on. Oh, yeah. And then you're back in the gameplay. It's incredible, oh my gosh. There's a lot of time for Chief to just look cool. They made an excellent character model for Chief, and they frequently let it shine with these close-ups. Maybe some people won't like this, but I'm a huge fan of how there are a bunch of cutscenes that are just Chief and Cortana. I think this is an incredible way to be efficient. Master the Chief! I'm sorry. Gain mastery over modeling Chief and Cortana, and then use it. There are less insane Hollywood shots for sure. I mean, they're still there, and they're amazing. Way cool, but a lot of the time is Chief and Cortana and grounded character interactions. Let's talk about th let's talk about this guy. I like this guy. I think some people might be thinking he complains all the time and is annoying, but that's his job at first. His job is to be an everyman that, when played against Master Chief, really shows how dedicated and courageous and dauntless Master Chief is. No, no, not this. Not again! We need to run! I need a weapon. Weapon? This is all I've got. It's enough. Wait, what? What are you gonna do? Improvise. Close the door. And in that respect, this man does the best freaking job ever. He just picked up a Spartan, a hyper-capable individual that humanity has looked to as their knight in shining armor. Look at how shiny it is, even on medium graphics. I can only run it on medium because my PC is doo-doo. Ooh, even more shiny on Ultra. I'm curious how much it would cost to upgrade to play it on Ultra 4K. You know, medium's, uh, medium's probably, uh, probably okay. Sorry, I got distracted. Fernando is understandably stressed the heck out by his scenario. 
six months alone in a ship graveyard floating outside an enemy command ship, and then his would-be savior turns out to want to add to his stress. Then what? You think we can stop them on our own? I told you. We lost. We need help, not heroics. No, we do our duty. Protect humanity, whatever the cost. But he always sticks around to help Chief despite his complaints. He's got an arc, he grows. By the end, he's all... <laughs> all right, here we go. <laughs> Get ready. You wanna know how I got these scars? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm really happy to see you. <laughs> really happy. I like him. And he's voiced by the guy who plays Octane from Apex Legends, which makes me like him even more. What about this new Cortana? The character of Cortana helps to perfectly emphasize both Chief's humanity and how disconnected he is from humanity because she's similar. She's an AI that has thoughts and feelings and she's trying to save humanity, but will never truly be a part of it. Chief and Cortana share this feature. Original Cortana spent a bunch of time saving the world with Chief and they bonded. We were supposed to take care of each other. And we did. She saved me. But I couldn't save her. And if you played those games, this line kind of hits deep. Are you okay? Being here? No. Not really. I bet. She was expecting you, but Atriox got to her first. You meant so much to each other. It can't be easy. Cortana was here six months ago. I could feel what she felt when you arrived. It was joy, fear, and pain. I was joking about the AI girlfriend thing, but also this sounds exactly like the emotions of someone who broke up with him. The Chief Cortana team up is especially critical because Cortana is physically the only one who can come with Chief to the depths of danger that he delves. We are walking into another trap. And you left that till last. Are you scared? No. You? Of course not. I've got you to keep me alive. Oh, and 63 millimeters of titanium alloy wrapped around our neural interface. I'll be fine. Anyone else wouldn't be able to keep up. Except for the Arbiter in Halo 3 and all the other Spartans in Halo 5. But we soft rebooted, remember? Chief is the best again. All these other Spartans you find are dead. And Chief gives each of them small moments of respect. Well, this Spartan's still alive. And Chief gives each of them small moments of respect. We've already established Chief as a man of action and has a profound sense of duty to help humanity. But in these small moments, we get to see Chief having almost tenderness as he shows reverence for the fallen. Ah, come on, come on, give me anything. Chief, I... Respond, please. Did you find the source of the signal? Whatever's down there either has to come with us or be left behind. Can you hear me? Dig site on the ring? This conservatory must be some sort of forerunner installation. What are you supposed they're after? It's time to go. Oh, and I forgot to talk about the main antagonist, Big Stinko Breath here. I don't like him. He's fine, I guess, but he gets a solid meh out of don't care. Also, Squidhead. <laughs> These flappies are kind of distracting when she talks. Well, how can Halo Infinite be the best Halo story if it doesn't have the best villain? This is a valid point. But what do we have to compare it to? Robot Twilight cosplay, Alien Popes, Shakespeare Blob, Cortana. I've never been a huge fan of the antagonists in the Halo series, though I do like the protagonists. Big fan of the Arbiter. 
Sergeant Johnson is a riot. I like the commander played by uh, the guy who plays Hellboy. That guy's cool. And I like Chief and Cortana. The, the, the Chief and Cortana. I don't think Stinko Breath's the best villain, but when Chief defeats Stinko Breath, Stinko Breath serves his purpose, which is to make Chief even more of a freaking cool guy. The Halo Infinite Master Chief is the most human he's ever been. I don't understand. You showed him respect. He was a monster. Yes. But at the end, he was just a soldier. Hoping he'd done the right thing. It's also the most superhuman he's ever been. The story culminates in the battle Chief is having with trying to trust this Cortana unit and thinking he might have to destroy her. Chief eventually, after almost deleting her because she was potentially getting hacked and corrupted, has to make a hard choice to trust her to help him save humanity or delete her for good because she could destroy it. Eventually it's revealed that this new Cortana is the same exact source code as the previous Cortana you're her. If we'd never met. Will I do what she did? Become what she became? Am I that already? My mission was to ensure that doesn't happen. It still is. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Now that she knows what she is, she wants to commit seppuku. I've restored the deletion protocols. I'm ready. The whole game, they've been establishing her horror at the atrocities the other Cortana model committed, and her kindness and desire to help humanity. The UNSC is still alive on this ring because of you, Chief. Keep it up. So when she finds out she's the same source code, she's scared of what she might become. Chief gets over his doubts and decides to push forward, saying, We do it together. How... How... Can you trust me? I don't. But I want to. You might think, Well, that's some cliché donkey dookie. But Chief here still has more he's got to do to stop this halo from getting used to blow up all the people. So it's a calculated risk, one he's more prone to take because of his connection with previous Cortana. Then he gets a bit of advice from that dead previous Cortana in one of her echoes. Look at us. We just keep saying goodbye, don't we? But this isn't an end. It's a chance to make amends, to rectify mistakes. And it starts here. It's a new start. He trusted her with everything he had once. Maybe now is the time to do that again. <laughs> it also feels like a direct response from the narrative lead being like, Oops, Halo 5, that was a goof. And we end with some of that exquisite shot construction. The final scene is Chief, Cortana, and Fernando having completed their arcs for this story, having a small bonding moment, and it's adorable. And that's the end. That's the end of the game. What a, what a flippin' great game. The focus on the Chief Cortana relationship, getting that critical Chief Cortana team up back, showing Chief's humanity and diligence by playing him against a normal man who is scared and stressed out. Clean and clear character growth through emotionally intimate conversations and experiences. Halo Infinite 
is the best Halo story there has ever been. It's some touching stuff if you care about the story and don't just skip all the cutscenes so you can kill more aliens. But if killing aliens in combat is all you care about, well stay tuned for the next video where I explain why Halo Infinite has the best Halo gameplay there has ever been. This is not a hot take, it is obviously and clearly the best by a lot. It's huge margin. So come back and you know, let's talk about it.